Rejoice and be glad, for today the Lord has made. What is this? And whose calendar are we going off? Amen. So hopefully what we're going to do is, is have a little discussion. I hate arguments. Arguments end up with uh, both sides losing. But discussions that sit there, I found, discussions sit there and people walk away, both sides having a discussion, both sides learn something about each other, if anything. So, Zeus Mossbender, little Shaul, you know, uh, even Shmuel, he sit there uh, with Zeus over there, did a uh, message for the watch folk, came out today, October 3rd. Very insightful. Always, uh, he always gives us gems and, and stuff like uh, he did with Petrichor, which is the smell of an oil that is released in the ground when the first rain hits, and it's, it's a sweet smell that you, it's like uh, an anointing of, of, of the Lord on the land with the rain. But uh, he came up and with Isaiah and Amos, were contemporaries that lived around 700 years before Yeshua. And as Yeshua did in his day, they warned the people that the religious practices with regards to the feast days, Adim, were utterly, what's that, corrupt? Wow. The writings and the recorded words of Yeshua in the Gospels are warning us in this day as well. Do not make use of or rely on the traditions of men. They will prove only to be blind guides. This is beautiful. This is a nugget. Look again at Isaiah 113. He gave examples of Amos and Isaiah. The new moons, the Sabbaths, and the calling of assembly. I cannot endure iniquity. Okay? In the sacred meeting, your new moons and your appointed feasts, my soul hates. They are a trouble to me. I am weary of bearing them. In other words, they have corrupted the feast states, the Mo'adims of Abba, so badly that they were, they were ashamed. It's like the earth itself. He had to uh, bring the flood of Noah because there was so much corruption and everything out in the world. They had to start over with eight people so that they could redo the, the seed of man. Otherwise, all flesh probably could have been lost. So, he's saying that loudly and clearly that Yahweh hates Yes, hates the new moon, Samus calling on the assembly. The Almighty of hosts going to say that these feasts are trouble to him. Now, if they are trouble to him, Zeus is making, why in the name of the only begotten Son would we use them as guides to t trying to discern events like uh, regard to eschatology? Again, the uh, the gem are just there. And it's in, like, Little Shaul just seems to find them. It's just beautiful. So something epic comes. This little screenshot I did of Scott Clark uh, giving his Revelation 12 sign. I believe this sign was for Israel to warn of Jacob's sorrow coming upon her as a woman in travail. The red dragon, we notice in that Revelation 12, is waiting for the child, or you could say believers, because that's what we were believing in. It was the child was us. We know it's the child is not Jesus Christ being born. This is Revelation 12. Common sense, if you just use common sense. <coughs> if it was Jesus Christ, then it would have said that the child was born and then it was it was taken down to Egypt. That's not what it says. It says the child was born and then caught up to heaven. We, according to Paul, are in the body of Christ. When we are born again, we become part of Christ's body. And that body... And the spirit lives in us. So that when the body is born, which is the spirit of Christ, that body is the body of believers, I believe, which is what the, the Revelation 12 sign. Scotty, he's got that right. It's a revelation on the body of believers. The, the whole point is, is the timing. This is, sit there, I've, I've watched other channels and out there, is that the, the dragon comes first and then it waits for, well, first we see the sign, okay? The sign is step one. Step two, then you could sit there, is that the dragon now positions itself so when the child is born, he can devour the child. Step three is that he missed the child. The child is snatched up and now goes after the woman to persecute the woman as a woman in travail under persecution. 
that which is Israel. Israel is the woman that gives birth to the body. It's a Jewish uh, faith in Christ. The Christ is the, the head, we are the body. Okay. So Scott Clark did a beautiful job. Zeus Mossbender, little Shaul, beautiful job. Ah, Jerry Tony also. These are people who sit there and bring forth information for the body, for the glorification of the body. This isn't to sit there to get, not, nobody's selling anything. Okay? I'm not selling it. I'm not, I don't have coffee mugs to give you and stuff. Okay? I'm sorry. What I can give you is, is if you thirst, living water because it's every word that comes out of the mouth of jesus christ was the father god gave jesus every word to speak okay so jerry tooney did an up one today as well and it was the watchman on the barley report how that uh, uh, i put down here this little thing this, this would be like 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 a, a field a barley this little green patch okay and the first fruit taken well, that first fruit is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the first fruit that was taken. The priest goes out to the field. He sees if it's ripe. He puts it together, takes a, the and sickle, and boom, he cuts it down, takes that to the, and puts it in the fire as an offering to the Lord God. Okay? Abba, uh, in heaven. It's, a, it's burning it. Okay? The four corners then, because once you then, you have to come back, and you have to harvest. So a barley harvest is monthly. Well, in the scriptures, I understand what that is. Jesus is the first fruit of taken from the earth. The rest of the harvest has to mature. It has to, so the corn, what uh, Jerry is pointing out, is that the barley was not ripe enough. It had not matured, is, is the word just given to me by the Spirit. So it can't be harvested yet. It has to mature better. It has to get into the understanding, okay? So that maturity grows with it by an extra 30 days. I understand that. So then, once it's the, the whole field is ready, then the farmer goes in, okay? And Jesus is going to reap this because he did not plant, but he's going to reap, okay? That's, that's the parable of the one talent. You used to sit there, the five, one talent, the five talents, and the ten. Don't hide the truth that you have Jesus Christ in your heart. Plant it. Even, even if you, you put it in a, a ministry, make sure that ministry is using its funds and everything else to glorify God and not itself. It's not like <coughs> Kenneth Copeland who's calling himself a billionaire, has multiple aircraft and a, and a runway all for himself while he lives in luxury and a multi-million dollar mansion. That's not investing in wisely. You want to sit there and put it in, in some small... Uh, thing that uh, that you see the fruit of the of the church that you're you're doing by the loss coming to the understanding of what salvation is, which I believe is First Corinthians 15, 1 through four, not just Romans ten, but I want to give the full. Okay, so the first fruit was Jesus Christ. The corners are left so that the poor, the gleam also is left for the poor. Okay, the barley harvest is what Jerry is seeing. Could that September be pushed to October because of the of uh, being a leap year? <coughs> Question I would have is, I think I'll get a little bit farther. Is that I have another thought on that? Is it has the has the Moedim, the peace of God, been so messed up with the timing of not keeping the appointments? It's a, the house of Israel has got it so messed up. We don't know when the uh, the peace or or I mean. If I go to the next one, okay, you see, from from my, the way I can see it, the way that the Spirit is saying to me is from, from Adam until the cross, the law and everything was kept. But from the cross forward after 70 AD when the, when the temple was destroyed and the dispersion came in, the house of Israel lost its, its uh, uh, skill on keeping the dates, the Moedim, the feast, and everything else. For me, the way I, I believe in dispensation, so I believe in the law up until the cross, and then from a little bit maybe past the cross, and then the church age came in. Paul, of Saul, who was Saul of Tarsus, was given a uh, blinded, and then he was uh, given insight, and he was taught seven mysteries that he taught. For me, 
Jesus taught under the law, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, the four Gospels should be under the Old Testament. They are who he is and works for heaven. You call upon his name under the Old Testament. We're not under the Old Testament. We're under the New Testament. We're under the church age, caught to us by Paul. It's trusting in the cross, 1 Corinthians 15, what he did on the cross, not ourselves. He shed blood on the cross in grace. It's not I self called, I called to the Lord. I, that's a work. Then it's saying I saved myself. I don't need Jesus Christ because I, okay, you're putting the tr like the heart the the cart before the horse. It's not what I did. It's what Christ did. Christ was nailed to the cross. Okay. So Jacob uh, and when I look at Matthew, a great many people get it out. Twenty four fifteen is, is the desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet. He's talking about midpoint when the Antichrist goes in and calls himself God, and the people then realize, hey, he's not the Messiah. Okay. But this is, is been 69 weeks at the cross. There's still seven weeks. That seven weeks is Jacob's sorrow. If it's Jacob, if Daniel's 70th week is to upon thy people and the city, which is Jerusalem, then the people are Israel. Nothing to do with the church. So if you're believing that it's the same thing with with, uh, with uh uh, little Shaul was talking about the Zeus most mentor as you're believing in the doctrines of men. Look at this as the scripture. Look at the Bible for yourself. Jesus Christ came for the Jews. They rejected him. He put them on pause. He did not uh, cut them off. He put them on pause. Okay. He's going to come back to the Jews when the church age, when the age of grace is over and we get into Jacob's sorrow. Okay. So. What am I, I'm seeing, that here's another brother. Heavenly Sign 2017, Steve Seagull. Okay, he has a beautiful timeline. But the question is, is, is the timeline, are we, are, is our calendar correct? If the barley is off by one month, does that mean that October 21st is really when this piece of trumpet should have been? Okay. Which would mean that his date, his timing and everything would have been right on if there was not a leaf year. But if the leaf year, because of the barley not being right, Jerry has put a, a sign, a, a video out there on that. If you study that, if you re watch it, then you have, well, maybe that's what, if we sit there and just have a discussion. We understand Scotty has, has nailed it on the, on the Revelation 12 sign. The stellar, uh, a stellarium prof uh, we saw on 9 23 24 was probably a better day with the wound under her feet instead of beside it but it came and went could that be a multiple meaning i mean there's so much here because you see it's a the idioms of the feast of trumpet it is it's a feast of not knowing the day or the hour well is it a compound problem is what the spirit is saying to me if the feast a, if the harvest of barley is off by a month and the feasts are not kept well by the by the house of Israel then we really don't know the day or the hour which is exactly only God the Father knows so then we're waiting not for the trumpet of a of a horn of a ram we're waiting for the trump of God his he will Jesus Christ will open the door for coming into the kingdom of heaven and a trump sounding it was in uh, John 4 1 a trumpet our trump that our voice that sounds like a trump okay if that is true then it's not a ram's horn it's a it's a heavenly trump that sounds and has nothing to do because the first three let me go back the first three Jesus was here he fulfilled them. The first three up to Pentecost. Pentecost was on, on the, we saw the Holy Spirit came down and the apostles received it. We're in that age of grace right now. But does the last three, does the Feast of Trumpets, does the, the atonement, the tabernacle, does it have to be on the Jew, Jewish uh, feast days, the Moadims? If they have corrupted them, 
Why then should we look at them? Do you understand? That's what I'm getting from here, from Paul. Little, little uh, Shaul, Paul, okay? He's saying, look again at Isaiah. If the Lord does, it troubles him, these feet, because they're so messed up that they've been corrupted, why would he, a God who is, who is holy and just, use something that is corrupt? Why? That is the whole point of us getting new bodies, new heavenly bodies, because our bodies are corrupt. No flesh shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Therefore we, the dead in Christ, shall rise. They shall get glorified bodies, and we also shall be, in the twinkling of an eye, be glorified in new bodies. Then we enter into the kingdom of heaven. But the trump may not be exactly the, the, a ram's horn. It may uh, be a trump that comes from heaven itself. Does that, I hope that makes sense. Where I'm, you're understanding what I'm seeing here. We could, because it has so many names and everything up, but the feasts, the Moedim, the appointed times have been messed up. See? Jerusalem, I would sit there, one of them, I was on watch, I wrapped your watch, I was watching, and on, on a Gregorian calendar, I heard trumpets blowing on the Feast of Atonement. On September 30th, I sit there and I heard them, and I heard them on, on uh, Rosh Hashanah, on the Feast of Trumpets, but nothing happened. These the Jews are the Jews using the Gregorian? I thought it was the HC, the Hebrew calendar, is what they are supposed to. They're supposed to go on lunar cycles. So have they so corrupted with the Sanhedrin messing the word of God up to where the Sanhedrin word is better than even Jesus Christ, where they persecuted Christ because they wanted their authority and their word to be spoken of other than than the word of God itself. Therefore, they themselves have bowed down to Lucifer and paid him homage so that they can have rule is what I'm saying. Hopefully that makes sense that you understand. So what should, what should it be? I'm sitting I'm I'm open for, for discussion. I love discussion. I mean I've got a, a, a Yeshua's house of prayer. I like it when people come in and they discuss. Uh, People come in and they sit there and they have religion or dogma where they sit there, they're believing the Pope or Catholicism or they're bringing uh, this uh, Lutheranism. Uh, Martin Luther says, how about what Jesus Christ himself says in the, the Apostles? Going to the scriptures, going to the source. Not what I believe. What does the, That's the whole point. We always say, what does the Bible say, right? That's our, that's our final word our final word is what does the scripture say if the scripture does not match what i'm saying you throw it out it's useful it's, it has no meaning right so we were sitting there and we we're looking on feasts that uh the father doesn't like abba doesn't like the feast because they've been corrupted right so i like to do this each time paul's gospel Preach unto all people. This is 1 Corinthians 15. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also you have received, and wherein you stand, by which also you are saved. Now, Romans 10, I know, Romans 9, or Romans 10, 9 through 10, or 9, whatever, sits there, I know it's there, is that uh, whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord. Great. You know, I sit there, I love that, but I sit there, I'm going to make a little illustration here. Please don't be offended. Sometimes I have to be sharp. If you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all, which I also received. Paul, who was Saul of Tarsus, first had to go to the, to the cross and understand that Jesus had to die on the cross and take the sins of the wind. For without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. Okay? Jesus took our place and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scripture. This gospel is what Paul declared. This we're called the gospel which I preached unto you. The gospel we should be preaching to the unsaved. Why? Because the definition of assume, to take upon oneself, undertake, assume responsibility, to put oneself in, assume a position to save. Uh, usurp, assume control, to pretend, I mean, look at all this. 
But the city, when you get down here, what does assume mean? Yeah, it makes the first part out of you and me. When we assume that the loss knows what the cross is, knows that the meaning of the shedding of the blood, what the shedding of the blood is, is it's not what I call upon the Lord, but it's trusting on what the blood does. It's the blood that cleanses the sins of my sins from me. Not that I, through a work of calling, saying, I call upon the Lord, and therefore I save myself. I can't save myself. I have no works, nothing to boast about, because that's what happens if you sit there and think at least we boast about works. We live by grace alone. Okay, grace through faith plus nothing. It's not our salvation by something we did. We did by believing and trusting in what Jesus Christ did, that we then can come with the first Corinthians, having an understanding that Christ shed. I mean, he sat there, I had someone in my chat, he sat there, Jesus Christ in the garden bled when his sweat. He bled at the, at the whipping post. He bled carrying the cross to, to Golgotha's hill. He was nailed to the cross and bled on the cross. The ground, all that ground has his blood. He went through a great deal of pain. He bled when they pulled his beard. And we're just a turn, well, well, just call upon the name of the Lord. Yeah, well, that's great. But do you know why you're calling upon the name? Do you understand what he suffered? See, that to me is, we're, sit there, we, we're giving half. We're, we're assuming too much. I come to you, Heavenly Father, I come to you in prayer asking for forgiveness of my sins. I confess with my mouth, believe with my heart that Yeshua Jesus is your son and that he died on the cross of Calvary that he might be forgiven and have eternal life in the kingdom of heaven. Father, I believe that Yeshua, which is means salvation, Jesus rose from the dead and I ask you right now, come into my life. Be my personal Lord and Savior. I repent of my sins, worship you all the days of my life. Your word is truth. The word he spoke was the Father. I confess with my mouth that I am born again, cleansed by the blood of Yeshua. In Yeshua, in Jesus' name I pray. All right, tell someone. The link I will have for my salvation. Prayer or praise if you need to do. Okay? So, what, did, what, what was the message? What is this? Little Shalom shows us that the feast God hates. Be why? Because the Sanhedrin got in there and they messed with them. They messed them up. I see with uh, 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 Jerry Tone is that the barley could be off by a month. But I also understand that the, uh, the feast may be all messed up. And I don't think the feast of trumpets or the fall feast we need to worry about because I think what happened is God now so hates those feasts that the trump that I'm seeing is not the feast of trumpets is what I'm saying. Therefore the, the, the trump is God's voice. It's God who's, is it there, it's, Jesus said it, he say only the Father is the one that knows the day or the hour. It's his trump, his voice. Only when the Father gives the okay can the Son open the door. And we be taken out is what I'm thinking, is what the, the Spirit is feeling, what I'm sensing in my spirit. So we, if we're good and faithful servants, will be joyful. We will not sit there and, and sit there and mock each other as we are. That this is baloney and all kinds of, and, and the rapture being pre tribulation church has nothing to do with Jacob sorrow. Jacob's sorrow is a reconciliation. He shall confirm the covenant. He being Jesus Christ or maybe the two witnesses who may come at the beginning of tribulation because the Revelation 12 sign is much more than just a sign about a child being born. It's a sign of the coming Jacob's sorrow. That's what the dragon is, the persecution that will come against Israel. Okay, she's surrounded right now. America's under attack. We're seeing our, uh, by liberals that are uh, conservative eye concept of believing in God, one nation under God, even our national anthem, in which the military had forced something there, sit there, it was military soldiers holding up the American flag because the flagpole was, was broken by cannon. 
and the British demanded that they take the, the American flag, the Stars and Stripes, down as a sign of surrender. And the soldiers gave their lives for that flag to, to be seen in the Star Spangled Banner. And so that now sports, as Mr. Caddis said, sports has now become a political tool for the elite to mock. And it might, I turn off the TV. I got rid of it, actually, that... Uh, Sports should be sports. NBA and all that, that should be sports. Should have nothing to do with politics. That's what the Olympics were all about. It was supposed to be human. That we are all the same. Okay? But uh, that's what I'm, I'm coming up on. That sits there, it's just, to me, that's my decision. That's me. Because I put on the uniform. At a time, 1969, when people were being uh, hit with uh, balloons filled with, with urine. Oh, you see, I believe in Star Trek. I believe in a logic. Love of God in Christ. Logic. We have too much human emotions that gets in there and we debate each other. We want to debate. How about if we just discuss it? Jerry Tony's got a good point. If the, if the barley is late, then the rest of the feast must. I mean, this the calendar is so messed up. The fact that we have a date with using a stellarium has uh, shows us that we can maybe close to the season. We don't know the date and the time of the hour. And I don't think, I, I'm going to say it again, I don't think the ram's horn is what we're listening, we should be listening for. I think we should sit there and be listening for a trump that comes from the throne of God, the trump that is the voice of God. He is going to decide when the, that feast, when the, har when the harvest is ready to be harvested. The first fruit was Jesus. Well, I sit there and in Colorado, I worked on a cattle ranch with the Angus. And you sit there, you sit there during the summer months, we watered and uh, uh, and then uh, got the wheat, uh, the hay to grow. And then we, I was raking. They cut it and I raked. And then, and then the baler was behind me. It was an experience. Well, you sit there, you leave the corner, like I said, and, and there. What happens after, I mean, we are the body. God has got to come for the harvest of souls. We are the four corners. That's the poor. We're supposed to go to the poor because those that in the in the uh, the feast didn't come, they gave excuse. We're going to the four corners of the world to give them the good news, the gospel of 1 Corinthians. The 1 Corinthians is that Jesus Christ died on the cross, shed his blood, was buried and rose again. That if we trust on what he did, our names get written in, in the book of salvation. It's not what we do. When we get saved, we do. We become a we become a fig tree. We produce fruit for others to come to us, and by our fruit they shall know us. Not works. Works is in the Old Testament. Works, water baptism, and call upon Jesus. Call upon the Messiah, because that's what it was under the Old Testament. We're under the New Testament. When the church is removed. It could go back to the Old Testament, but I really think that under the uh, tribulation time, it's going to be either going to take the mark and buy, sell, or have, uh, you can buy, sell, or uh, whatever, and uh, to buy or sell, or you're going to sit there and have your head cut off. And that sounds like uh, a religion we know. It says it's peaceful. Well, no, it's not peaceful. It's a world domination uh, critique that I believe was set up by the, the Pope of Rome. And that uh, Muhammad was taught by Jesuits priests, and we have a Jesuit priest now. And he's saying that Jesus Christ failed, the cross failed, that uh, he, his word is better than God's word. There's an apostasy going on in the church, and Revelation 18 is saying to those of you who believe, come out of this harlot that sits on seven hills, okay, and has made herself uh, drinking the, on the blood of the wine, uh, the, the blood of the martyrs who, would, who gave their, their lives for Jesus Christ. It's not to mock, it's not to too. Jesus is saying, like the, the Moedim, the feast states, they were corrupt. God doesn't like them. That's a, that's a gem. Come out, read the Bible for yourself. You understand that Paul is the apostle. Peter never went to Rome. Paul went to Rome. 
and uh, Mormons? Well, that's completely all by itself right there. Then. That's Joseph Smith and his magic rock. Magic, using magic to come up with a, a Bible that uh, Jesus, uh, that Paul, I should say, warns us, even if an angel named Moroni comes and gives you any other gospel, rebuke, accuse him, uh, right? Accur let him be a curse. There's the word. So. What do we do? Well, we stay happy, we stay joyful, we sit there, we ha we know we're not going to be uh, uh, forsaken. Uh, the harvest is going to be brought in. Uh, God didn't go to the cross to die, to leave us here. He went there to suffer so that uh, those who believe in him should not suffer. It's those who reject and the, tr and the, the house of Israel that reject Jesus Christ. They refuse to accept him as the Messiah. That is Jacob's sorrow. That is why uh, Daniel's 70th week is is for them. It's not for us. It's not for the church. It's not for the believers. It's not for the barley. It's not for the this uh, body of Christ, which is to be taken out, snatched physically, forcibly out of harm's way. The harm's coming is that the wrath of the devil is coming. That's what Revelation 12 shows us. The Moedines have been corrupted. Can't use them according to what uh, well, Shaul has shown us, Tony has shown us that the, the barley wheat is off. Let's talk about it, right? Let's, let's, let's just put it, Barry has such a gentle, easy way of sitting back and just, let's talk about this. Let's, let's pray about this. Let's think about this. Let's hold up Jesus Christ. Let's, let the full gospel that he died on a cross shedding his blood. He shed it even in the garden. So he's, he went through a great deal. And let's leave that not out. Because he, all that pain and suffering was all the sins of this world he took upon himself. I don't want to diminish. I don't sit there and make light of something that he suffered. And simply, well, just what well, sounds so simple and easy. Yeah, trust. Trusting not in yourself. That's what, how I got saved. I got saved and sober because I quit trusting in myself and I trusted in Jesus Christ. I trusted in Him. So hopefully this makes sense that we can sit here and continue. That uh, my trust is, is not in the Moedim. My trust is in Jesus Christ. Christ made a promise. If I go to prepare a place for you, then where I am, I will have. I will come that you may be with me. That is a promise that he has made. He keeps his promise. Man, the Moedim, the Sanhedrin, they they glorify themselves. They think they have the word, and they've added and and done things to the word to make themselves glor be glorified, rather than declaring who Abba is. He's Yahuwah. Okay, he is the name of God. Okay. Uh, with that, uh, Maranatha and uh, Shalom, may the peace that is of Jerusalem, because uh, it was named after the Philistines by Roman Emperor Hadrian. Palestine, Palestine never existed. It was Jerusalem. And it was made after the Philistines to uh, call Palestine, so that under the Turks and everything else, the Roman Emperor, he would mock the Jews in 70 AD after he uh, destroyed the temple. So, again, the Palestine people don't exist. J.D. Farag is correct. It's a, it's a lie. It's per, uh, they came straight from the, the heart of hell. And the, the father of all liars, Lucifer himself. So, shalom, may the peace be with you. And uh, let's talk about it. Let's have a good discussion, not argument. Amen.